Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. We go to the Lord in prayer. Our oh Father and God, we give thee thanks and I praise and magnify thy name. Thou art worthy to be praised, who is a pardoning God like thee, or who has grace so rich and free. Thank thee for thy wonderful blessing towards us in thy Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, that we can have salvation full and free. And we thank thee, O God, for being saved by thy wonderful grace. Give thee thanks for this opportunity of sharing the good news of salvation to others. And ask, O God, that thou will lead by thy Holy Spirit, that it, thy word will reach the hearts of all those who are still in darkness, who are still outside of Christ, who are slaves to sin, who do not know him, that they may come to know him, whom to know is life eternal. Thank thee for this medium that we can use and give thee thanks for all those who facilitate this program and ask, O oh God, that thou will lead thy servant by thy Holy Spirit in the declaration of thy word, that thy word will go forth in the demonstration of the Spirit and with power, and that men may take heed and be saved, turning to the Lord Jesus Christ who alone can save. So we give thee thanks again for thy leading and ask thy blessing upon this program and upon all those who view, all those who will hear through Jesus Christ. Amen. We read from the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, and we read from verse 31, verse 31, John chapter 8, John chapter 8 and verse 31. Onwards. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They answered him, We, being, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free. Indeed, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Lord Jesus Christ had a discourse with the, with the Jews, the, the Pharisees, the scribes, they were there. Because at the beginning of the chapter, we will read there that they brought a woman who was caught in adultery. They said that she was caught in the very act. And they brought this woman to the Lord Jesus Christ, tempting him. They wanted him to cast judgment upon her. They knew full well that someone with this condemnation, someone who has committed this act, 
should be stoned to death. So they knew that she should be stoned to death, but yet they brought her to the Lord Jesus Christ that he will pronounce that judgment. However, the Lord Jesus Christ knew their hearts. He knows the heart of all men. He knew the intent they brought this woman, this woman before him. And the Lord Jesus Christ, though he ignored them, they still probed him. They want him to, to say something. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. You see, they were all guilty as sinners, but yet they chose this woman, whom they said she was caught in adultery, and knowing what is, what is the con uh, this conviction and what they should do, they brought this woman to the Lord Jesus Christ and he confounded them. And we read, and when they heard it, that is in verse 9 of the said John chapter 8, and when they heard it, being convicted in their own conscience, they had their guilt, they had their sinfulness among them. As individuals, too, they, they, they knew how sinful they were, what they do, not caught by men. In darkness, when others don't see the things they do, maybe it was even greater than the sin of this woman. And maybe, maybe the same sin that this woman was convicted of, they did it as well. And they, being convicted in their own conscience, we read, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. However, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Remember, they brought this woman. They said that she was caught in adultery in the very act. They condemned her. They knew that she should be put to death. But yet, when the Lord Jesus Christ challenged them, they went away one by one, being convicted in their own conscience, and they were gone. She said, No, man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You could imagine how elated this woman was. How she felt free. How she rejoiced in that she was not condemned by the Lord. But he said, go and sin no more. Not to continue in that practice. However, the Lord Jesus Christ had a dialogue with them. He took the opportunity to have a discourse with them. And we read, if, even from um, verse 12, it says, he said, I am the light of the world. He was now presenting himself to the people, who he was, who he is. And they had difficulty understanding that the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is equal with the Father. For he, when he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And they said, Thou bearest record of thyself. So your record is not true, because you are speaking of yourself. And Jesus said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, Yet my record is true. My record is true. 
For I knew whence I came and whither I go, but he cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. You judge after the flesh. Yes, they judge after the flesh. But he said, I judge no man. And he said, well, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the, but I and the Father that sent me. It is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. So in other words, he was telling them that he came from the Father. He was sent from the Father. They are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, he said. And the people, they wanted to lay hands on him. Yes, scribes, the Pharisees, they wanted to lay hands on him because they couldn't understand what he is saying. Because he was in the temple now, as he was teaching them and telling them who he is. And we read, then said the Jews in verse 22, will he kill him will he kill himself because the lord jesus said unto them i go my way and he shall seek me and he shall die in your sins and whither i go he cannot come so he told them many things that baffled them they couldn't understand the the, the teachings that he was giving to them he was enlightening them that he is the light of the world. He and his father are one. He judges no man. He condemns no man. Said, I came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And the Lord Jesus Christ it was now telling them about their sins. If they die in their sins, and you don't believe in me. Where will you go? They didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the thing. They did not believe in him. And he further told them in verse 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he speak to them of the Father. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, he was telling them things that they couldn't understand because one of the reasons, they did not believe in him. They were judging him as one who is not of the Father. He is not the sent one. He is not the Christ. This is what they were saying in their minds and in their hearts, he is not the Christ. So they couldn't understand. But there were some who believed in him. For we read in verse 30, as he spake those words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe on him, if he continue in my word, there is where we started to read. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, Jesus was telling them, If you follow me, you are my disciples. You learn of me. You will get to know me. You will truly believe in me. And then... You shall be my disciples indeed. They'll be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ from inside. Their hearts will be with him. They will truly follow him. You know, there were many who followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Same Pharisees and the scribes, they want to catch him as he spoke. With You know, he may say something that is off key something for, by which they can condemn him. In the same way, remember, they brought this woman that he should say something, though they knew 
that this woman should be stoned to death. They wanted him to, to accuse him of something. And so there were those who were following for that reason. There were those who were following just to see the miracles. There were those who were following for the loaves and the fishes. They wanted something to eat. And he gave the people to eat, and this is the reason why they will follow him. But the Lord Jesus Christ wanted those who believe in him, that they will trust him, that they will give their, their, their all to him, consecrate themselves to him, to follow him, to be his disciples. So he said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You see, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is, he is the truth. He is the truth. And he said that ye shall know the truth. In John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And they shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, Jesus was more or less telling them about their sins. They need their sinful bondage. But they considered themselves not in bondage because they are Abraham's seed when he said that they answered him we be Abraham's seed we were never in bondage to any man how says thou ye shall be made free and this wasn't true this was not true saying though they were saying that they were never in bondage we will recall that the children of Israel they were delivered God using Moses from Egypt and now they were on their way to the promised land they were in the wilderness but yet they had a heart of unbelief they had a heart of unbelief and they were in bondage even by the Syri Assyria the Babylonians and even at the time they were speaking they were under the bondage of Rome of Rome but yet they are saying that they were never in bondage how then he can say that he will make them free moreover they claim to be Abraham's children and this is the mistake many people make because my parents are Christians, I am a Christian as well. Because they are God-fearing people, well, that gives me the right to be one of God's children. I am God's child as well. But no, we see they said they are Abraham's seed. They are Abraham's seed by birth, physical not spiritual and here we see the lord jesus christ is saying very verily i say unto you whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin in fact you are under the a bondage you are prone to do sin you always have to do sin and later we see the lord jesus christ told them this so he tells them that ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. The lust of your father ye will do. And they, they, they don't realize that they were under spiritual bondage. And lots of people don't realize that they are under spiritual bondage. Have to sin, the servant of sin, under the bondage of, uh, of Satan and this man Satan it is said he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there, there is no truth in him 
And remember, it is the truth that shall make you free. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the truth. And here he said, he is telling them, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. There is no truth in him, for he is a liar and the father of it. So the Lord Jesus Christ, in fact, told them eventually that though they claimed that they were Abraham's children, they were from the lineage of Abraham. Physically, they are Abraham's children, but spiritually, they are children of the devil. And the Lord Jesus Christ wanted them to know, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And though they were claiming that they were Abraham's seed, they seek to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he told them. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye choose to kill me because my word had no place in you. The word that he spoke to them, the things that he was telling them, the, the, the enlightenment he wanted to give to them, that I and my father are one, that I come not to judge any man, etc. They did not understand that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ was the sent one. He is the truth. And who they were, as they claim, Abraham's children, they were Abraham's children by seed, by seed. But spiritually, they were not Abraham's children. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to them in verse 39, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. See, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. He had faith in God. He was among the heroes of faith. As he was given instruction by God, even from Genesis chapter 13, Abraham moved by faith, going to a city, looking for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham moved by faith. He went to a place that he knew not of, and because Abraham believed God. But these people, they did not believe God, but they claim that they are Abraham's children and they wanted to kill the Lord Jesus Christ because he spoke the truth. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, the truth shall set you free. The Son, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And my friends, we were all born in spiritual bondage. Born sinners. The psalmist declared, Behold, I was conceived in sin. Yes, he was conceived in sin. You see, we were born sinners all because of Adam's transgression. Many were made sinners. And so we were born in such a condition and we need to be free. We are in bondage. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ said, as I've quoted before, ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. So we are prone to do evil things. The things that are evil, the things that are sinful, the things that God doesn't want, things that God hates. We are prone to do those things. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he came to set us free. That is why he went to the cross of Calvary. Because sin has us in bondage. And in order for sin to be removed, 
in order for sin to be forgiven, in order for sin to be washed away, in order for we to be cleansed from sin, the Lord Jesus Christ must shed his blood. Because blood was shed on the Jewish altars, blood of animals were offered, but this blood, the blood of animals, could not take away sin. They were but just a covering for sin. But thank God that the apostle could proclaim, he could exclaim, he had this assurance, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. You see, it needed richer blood, precious blood. It needs blood that flowed from noble vein that was not tainted, not the blood of animals, but the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew no sin. He did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. And as the Lamb of God, the, a Lamb without blemish and without spot, he offered that ultimate sacrifice, that sacrifice in which his Father was well pleased. And we will recall the Lord Jesus Christ as he cried upon the cross. Alas, he did cry, it is finished. Done is the work that saves. So there is no more sacrifice for sin. For the Lord Jesus Christ offered a perfect sacrifice to take away our sins. And therefore, you and I could be freed from the bondage of sin. You and I can be liberated. You and I can have that freedom. And when one is freed, when one is liberated, when one is emancipated, there is joy. It is a joyous time. It is a time of jubilation. And you can experience that joy, that jubilation. If the Lord Jesus Christ set you free, he said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You can be free from a burden of sin. There's power in the blood. And we give God thanks that even today, that blood can set you free if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in him and trust him for your salvation. May you do so. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, remember that Jesus saves, he keeps and he satisfies. May God bless you.